Hey, what's up guys, Arab here, and welcome back to an episode of my F1 2018 career mode, episode number 135 today for the Austrian Grand Prix in Season 7. If you guys did miss the previous one at the French Grand Prix, then be sure to go check that one out before you see this one. Probably the craziest race of the season so far. Uh, definitely worth checking out if you haven't. But uh, going into this one then, everyone actually surprisingly plateaued there. No one brought any upgrades, but it does give us a nice insight finally to where everyone is, especially at the bottom there. You can see how close that bottom fight is between Ferrari, Williams, Haas and Force India. Yeah, then you got Toros and McLaren, kind of in no man's land. I guess McLaren, if they upgrade maybe one more ultimate upgrade, they could kind of catch us there on paper. And then right at the top, you can just barely see that blue line of the Red Bull Honda car just underneath the Mercedes. That's just underneath the Renault. So the top three, uber close and pretty much level pegging on the on paper at least. Obviously, in reality, it's going to be a little bit different. So we'll see how Mercedes go. You know, they didn't go particularly amazing at France. They were still pretty good, but nothing crazy. So we'll see if finally they can try and uh, show the performance here at Austria, the Red Bull ring, but I'm sure Red Bull will have something to say about that. But we go into Q1 then, very overcast conditions. We've got some forecasts for some rain later in the session, so very uh, crucial we get this lap done and dusted. It wasn't actually the best lap in the end, a lot of understeer, and the car, compared to France, felt very stiff uh, you know, around Paul Ricard. It was very fluid, had a lot of grip actually through the high-speed corners, but around Austria, felt very rigid and just very weird to drive actually, but uh, in the end, it was still an okay lap time on that first one and like I said the rain was going to come down so by the end of Q1 the rain started to fall so it didn't actually matter how bad or poor the lap was it was still fine and good enough to get us into the uh, into the next session for Q2 in P9 there Leclerc and P8 we actually matched him pretty okay then in, in terms of the time difference and we're on the same tyre so that was fine going to Q2 then though we had intermediates to start the session off and you can clearly see we struggled a little bit there having to wrestle the car quite a fair bit into turn one completely opposite lock on the exit to keep the car in a straight line but but uh, nonetheless, just having to do the best job we can. But again, like you won changeable conditions here, so it might dry up towards the end of the session, but I thought I'd get a banker lap in anyway on these Inters there, but you can see the kind of lack of mechanical grip in a way with the Sauber car. Very floaty indeed. I mean, all the cars obviously do float a little bit more on the feeling in the in the wet, but it was very, very uh, very light on the actual feeling and the force feedback on the wheel, so it wasn't a particularly amazing lap time, and by the time we go through this session, we're down in P13 or 14, I think. At this point, it will actually eventually be down rock bottom in P15, the slowest lap time, but I'm basically fast one in the session, I was waiting for this dry period to come, because on the indicator, it said it was going to be dry, and as soon as I saw Van Dorn there in the Taurus on dry tyres, I knew it was time to go out, so we're at the moment at the bottom of the timing sheets, but it's now a dry track, you can see on the on the top right there, we're going to exponentially just gain so much time now, and so hopefully we just pop in a time that gets us into Q3 at the moment, the likes of Verstappen haven't even set a time to get them into the top 10 shootout, so there might be a few people that are caught out here eventually, but you can see Verstappen now moves away on the top left there, Hamilton, Ricardo other ones uh, just above us on the name tags there. So as we come through the last corner, then across the line. And I thought that was pretty damn good. We gained so many seconds there on the time. But to my surprise, we come through and it's only P13. And actually, Leclerc also got knocked out. So in the end, I felt pretty horrid about that when it came up as P13. But then I instantly kind of felt, okay, maybe that's just where our car is. Because Leclerc also didn't find the time. So I don't know what it was. Maybe our car just doesn't really react too well to cold conditions in the dry. Because uh, obviously the, the track would have been very, very cold. Because it, it only just stopped raining. It still was a little bit damp off, 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 off the racing line. So both of us knocked out of Q2. We both don't make it into the top 10 shootout. Both Torosso is looking very strong there, Ocon and Van Dorn, uh, and Sebastian Vettel actually, a big shout out to Sebastian Vettel, obviously the worst car on the grid, the Ferrari is, and Vettel's managed to pull that Ferrari up into the top 10 shootout, um, so kudos to him, obviously he's still not lost any of his skill from previous ones, it really is just how bad the car is as of late for the Scuderia Ferrari team, but uh, anyway, that's uh, the last we're going to partake in qualifying, we go to the grid now, and both myself and Leclerc have some recovery uh, driving to do, as well as the likes of Fernando Alonso, who also got knocked out of the top 10 so I'm not too disappointed to be honest because it was that kind of session in qualifying day where it was just so chaotic that you know there was bound to be some little trip ups and unfortunately both us in the Alfa Romeo Saab was tripped up so let's make up for it tomorrow in Sunday usually it's a very good track for me and my team actually throughout the entirety of F1 2018 career mode so let's just go for it let's go to the grid and see what we do 
Good afternoon and welcome to Spielberg and to a circuit that in one form or another has held every Austrian Grand Prix in the championship, except the very first back in 1964. It was at this race that John Watson lost a bet and his beard when he took Team Penske's only F1 victory in 1976. If anything, the stakes are even higher today with 25 points available for victory and a crucial advantage in the championship fight. The Spielberg circuit then is situated 700 metres above sea level, with just 10 corners making up one of the shortest laps of the season. One time around here is a distance of 2.6 miles, with the best overtaking chances into Turn 1 or the tight uphill Turn 3. Anthony Davidson is alongside me as usual for the race today. Let's talk about the engineer. That was a great win in the last race. Can they keep that momentum going this weekend? It's always nice to come into a Grand Prix weekend on a high, but your expectations are based much more on your practice and qualifying runs. So it's the momentum from those sessions that they'll be hoping to carry into the race today. So let's have a look at the starting grid and ahead of the Austrian Grand Prix for Season 7, my F1 2018 career mode. On pole position is a return to the top for Lewis Hamilton on pole alongside Sebastian Vettel in the Ferrari car, the worst car on the grid. Exceptional result for him in Q3. Verstappen is then in P3, followed by Nico Hülkenberg in P4. Pierre Gasly, P5, with Sergio Perez, P6, and the two Toro Rosses in the next row, with Carlos Sainz and Brendan Hartley round out of the top 10. Fernando Alonso in P11, Leclerc, P12, myself in P13, with Bottas, 14th. Ricardo in P15, with Raikkonen in P16. Then it's all a checkerboard between Williams and Haas from P17 down to P20. Ahead of this Austrian Grand Prix. Looks like sunny skies, no rain about for Sunday. Right, so we have a bit of a comeback on our hands here at the Austrian Grand Prix, but that's nothing new. We had to make a major comeback at France after the controversy on lap one. So we come back from worse, for sure. Austria is going to be a difficult one. There's probably just as much traffic issues as there was at Paul Ricard. Strategy-wise, we're going to try a two-stop here today, but we can see that might stretch into a one-stop. You never know. But for now, we'll start in the ultras and then just go from there as we see fit. But here we go then to five red lights to the Austrian Grand Prix. Very odd to see a Mercedes and Ferrari on the front row for a while now in this career but five lights are out and we're underway it's a bit of a sluggish start for us a good one for Leclerc into turn one though we're not pressurized uh, behind us and so we can try and make a move around the outside of Leclerc and also maybe potentially Fernando Alonso and Brendan Hartley there in the McLaren and Renault those two side by side we tuck in behind and get ahead of Leclerc but he's going to come back at us there so again us two teammates are going to go side by side and hopefully this won't end in tragedy just like it did at France as he pulls a move on the outside so fair play he gets the momentum there and the traction as well as our car wobbles a little bit to the right but we're still neck and neck as are Alonso and Hartley there up ahead of us and a lot of two by twos actually as I look ahead of us, uh, there's literally three two-by-twos ahead of us. And then the fourth one is us. That's absolutely amazing there. Some great battling at Austria so far on the opening lap. And Leclerc is still there. We're going to have to try and jostle for position around the outside. But he squeezed us quite well there. And we're nearly off the circuit even, having to take all the curb and some more to make it still side-by-side. -side. But eventually he does squeeze us out. He's up into P12 now. We're back down to P13 where we started this entire race. Well, lap two now. There's going to be a bit of a domino effect into the hairpin. I could see that coming from a mile away. So we dive down the inside. We're going to try and squeeze Leclerc out on the exit there. And we're up into P12. That was always going to happen. That, that hairpin is so bad for a domino effect when you've got so many cars still trying to fight each other and there's no kind of, you know, dive bomb down the inside. They all just kind of, you know, just hold each other up so we can make the dive down the inside just like we can do on Brendan Hartley there. He locks up actually in the front right tyre. So that's quite good timing from us actually that uh, we made the dive and he locked up anyway. So he's going to go wide and we're able to get up into P11. And he's actually so slow in the exit that Charles Leclerc is also able to try and make a move on the outside that is of the next right-hander there. But Hartley will fight back, I'm um, assuming, as we look behind us on the top left that keeps uh, switching names. And Leclerc actually has a go at us now. So he's building a lot of momentum there. Feeling quite punchy indeed, but Hartley is able to keep it. And we are also able to keep it in P11 then as uh, we try and chase after Fernando Alonso, who at the moment is being bogged down by a bit of traffic himself ahead of us as there's uh, two abreast there between two cars. I can't quite tell which one's which. I think it's a Ferrari, Sebastian Vettel, who obviously has the worst car on the grid. So he might have qualified in second place, but he's going to go down the order pretty damn rapidly. And there you go now. He is going to go down the order as Alonso now goes for a move also to the inside of turn one. It's almost three abreast. But Vettel gets squeezed out 
though on the left hand side we've taken turn one very patiently there and that's worked to our uh, benefit there as we're able to just sneak down to the inside and get a good enough uh, momentum and exit to try and make a move now not only one but two cars there Van Dorn and Alonso there Alonso overtakes Van Dorn I'm going to try and overtake both of them around the outside we find amazing traction there and that's a really nice move on Alonso but it's not over yet that Renault has the straight line speed so maybe he might come back at this but for now we've got the traction there obviously ultra soft tyres versus the super soft that Alonso is on so he's on a slower compound attire so you would like to think I could overtake Alonso even though he's probably got the faster car on paper I've got the better tyre there and so that's why I wanted to kind of start on ultras so you know I could still probably do the one stop maybe that's open to us but I wanted to be on the fastest tyre available at the very start to make the moves here and so we make a very easy one and uh, Sergio Perez there in the slow force Indy car and we're up into P7 now so already I would say that's a pretty uh, good opening five laps there in terms of the recovery drive meanwhile right up ahead of us is a mega fight between the two Frenchmen Pierre Gasly and uh, Esben Ocon there in the Red Bull Honda and Toros Honda and right behind them is Carlos Sainz just kind of sitting back and watching this fight but those two still side by side so I don't know what it is you know obviously Q2 uh, the Toros was looking so strong and then even Q3 they weren't too bad actually and Ocon here is putting up a very good fight against Gasly so I don't know what it is about the Red Bull ring but the Toros the, the junior sister team of the Red Bull family appears to just have gained a lot of speed here but uh, saying that though eventually Gasly will get up ahead and get ahead of Ocon there now Sainz might ought to do something but up ahead of those three is uh, this man Nico Hulkenberg in P3 for now and he, uh, Lewis Hamilton in second place and it's going to be Max Verstappen that actually leads the way of this Austrian Grand Prix so Hamilton although he was on pole I did say probably Red Bull would have something to say about Mercedes coming through and marching on their parade and so Verstappen at the moment leads the way in a Red Bull car at the Red Bull ring but saying that though Mercedes there are they are there at the performance chart for a reason because they have made upgrades and so Hamilton will try and come back at him there with a bit of be uh, better straight line speed but Verstappen for now is able to defend but I think that's going to be quite an interesting fight to see not only for this race but as we go on through the, through the next few races how Mercedes really cope with attacking Renault and Red Bull for really the first time in a long while in his career mode as we now go down the inside of Carlos Sainz there very nice move actually catch him napping there behind the two Frenchmen but he's going to come back at us there as much as I want to try and squeeze him he sent one down the inside so it's uh, two by two here Gasly Ocon myself and Carlos Sainz and look at the traction he's got ridiculous speed there so he's on the same set of tyres as I am so that's just a straight car to car fight and so the Renault has that unfortunately uh, right now at the moment but there's such a big fight going on between Ocon and Gasly up ahead that I think they might back up uh, Carlos Sainz into me so we have a, maybe another opportunity to maybe make an overtake on to maybe lap 10 if we're lucky as we're going to have to see how we go through that second last corner very nice stuff in the last corner pretty much pushing Carlos Sainz almost through that corner but alas unfortunately just at this stage of the Grand Prix I just don't have quite the pace to overtake him so in the end we still remain P7 by the time we get to lap 11 and we're going to come in for a pit stop now along with Espen Ocon then so Gasly and Sainz continue on so they're going to try and stretch their sense a little bit more the undercut has worked okay-ish around Austria in the past so that's why I also wanted to come in a little bit earlier than Sainz we might have a good chance to overtake him it kind of depends on the traffic we get hit with but we're now way down the pit lane obviously the last car on the pit lane there and so we're going to swap on to super soft tyres so now this is the crucial moment here so this could either be a two-stop race for us or we could open this up to a one-stop because the super soft with the tyre wear upgrades we've now got seven seasons in on most of these cars on the grid the super softs do go that long so we could try and stretch this to a one-stop I'm going to have to try and just play it by ear and see what the situation's like but right now we come out just ahead of the Haas car there and behind the Ferrari of Raikkonen but it's going to be an easy pass around the outside despite him being on ultra soft tyres very worn Ultra soft tyres, and so we're up into P16 now. We'll close up to the uh, Williams car eventually, up into P13. By, lap by the time we get to lap 13, actually, ironically, there. And I'm going to try and make it P12 on Lance Strolls. A few more people have made pit stops as we've gone through the Grand Prix. The next few laps after the pit stop there, and now we just about to skate through into P12. A little bit of a wobble, and so the car definitely not feeling as stable as it was around Paul Ricard there, clearly on the long right hander down the hill. But Ocon sets the fast lap of the Grand Prix then on that last lap, and he kind of inspires me to push on there. So lap 15, we set a purple lap time straight after he does and we've actually had some great clean air to the point where there is Gasly that is his Red Bull car just came out but Carlos Sainz that's the Renault right behind us so Sainz we've jumped Sainz in the pit stops and so once again the two Frenchmen go battling into the hairpin there we've got a uh, uh, force India car Valtteri Bottas is in the mix he's uh, out of sync of the Grand Prix so we overtake him very easily down the inside there with a nice switch back move there although he's still there we're just about to squeeze past him there but the two Frenchmen look at this they are really going hammer and tong I think it's a sense of pride to be honest I mean actually remember 
remember in, in real life F1, uh, Gassi and Ocon, they actually fell out due to kind of their squabbles they've had in uh, junior categories. So it's kind of fitting in a way that in game here at the moment, Gassi and Ocon are having a real old scrap here. But as we move on to lap 17, getting very close to Gasly here as uh, these three are scrapping away, are really just holding each other up really and uh, uh, Science is also going to close up behind us. But you can see we have a little look on the inside, on the outside of turn one I should say, but uh, Gasly able to pull that through, just can't get the, the acceleration there and he's actually going to go and make a move now on this next car, the Mercedes of uh, Nico Hulkenberg. So he's going to live it slow. He's on soft tyres. Gasly as well. So in theory, I should have better pace right now because we are on a faster combat attire. But the pure pace of the Red Bull car is just very apparent. So this is why I was talking so much about in France in that episode about our car is just going to go backwards and backwards as we go on through this season because we've re we maxed out our car and these other teams have still got you know potential to improve their car and they're already uh, ahead of us on the performance chart there. So Gasly gets past very easily. We're going to send one down the inside of Hulkenberg. A little bit of a tap there. Very aggressive on Hulkenberg. I will fully admit and put my hands up there, but I needs must. I need to get past him. And he was going very slow on soft tyres. I mean, science gets past him literally within a lap time there. So that's uh, really how slow Hulkenberg was going in that silver arrow of his. But So we're up into P4 now, actually. Very lofty height as Gasly and Ocon are fighting away now for P2 and 3. And we're now going to try and join the party on the end of Sector 1. Gasly really holds Ocon up there into the apex and under braking. So we're able to swoop around the outside there up into P3. But Ocon comes back and it's that Torosa Honda is a really good car in a straight line and acceleration there. And so he sends one down the inside to my surprise. Really big dive bomb there from Esteban. And he gets it back up into P3. And so we're down to P4 once again. So really frustrating there. But at the moment in the lead of the Grand Prix is Lewis Hamilton then. Verstappen nowhere to be seen. He He's actually had some major car issues. You would have heard it maybe on a team radio uh, at some point in this video that he had issues, actually, my uh, engineer told me. So it's Hamilton in P1. Second place is Gasly. Third place, Ocon at the moment. Myself, I'm in F uh, P4, still trying to chase him down. Then you've got P5 is Carlos Sainz. Then it's uh, Nico Hulkenberg. So uh, he's uh, still just about ahead of Leclerc. Then it's uh, Fernando Alonso. And then there is Max Verstappen. A bit of no man's land now. Maybe he's recovered. Maybe his car's fixed itself, but he dropped down way. Way, uh, way, way, way down the order. Obviously, he was in first place. That's really gutting for the Dutchman, getting no luck so far in season seven. He was, you know, pretty much very comfortably in the lead, but then he just dropped down. And now Hamilton's the one in a very comfortable and dominant uh, race lead at the moment on lap 21. But now look at this. We're going to make it three wide. Trying to go around the outside, but we've locked up. We've locked up there with that fight. We have to go to the escape road and use the runoff area and come back on track. We come back in P4, so no kind of damage done. We've not gained any uh, illegal positions there. But I tried to make it three wide. We locked up on the front left tyre. Just didn't have enough confidence and grip in the car. So we had to take to the evasive action there and do a bit of a Hamilton uh, Rosberg kind of situation in 2016 and take off to that tarmac there. And so those two are still going at it. They really, I don't know if, it's, if this is on, on purpose, but the game is really quite coded this battle quite fiercely as it probably would be in real life if Ocon and Gas were fighting on track for P2 and 3. But now we move on to lap 22 and in the end, Ocon actually is going to come in for a second pit stop. So he fought so hard and in the end, it's not even going to be for a podium because he has to come in. And at this stage, I think you'll probably guess that I'm committing to a one-stop here. So Leclerc comes in for his second stop of the, of the Grand Prix. I'm committing to going to the end of the Grand Prix now in the Super Soft. The tyre wear isn't too bad. And I feel like in now some clean air with Ocon not there kind of scrapping away and making it three wide. I could try and overtake Gasly here and get up into P2 if we're lucky on lap 24 now with DRS. Nice and easy into turn one. Take a nice tight line into the apex there. Get the good exit. Look at that. And now we'll get right up his chuff. Get the slipstream going. DRS, overtake mode, rich mix going. Pull to the left-hand side. And this will be a pretty simple pass, actually, up into P2. He comes back at us, though, in the brake zone. But we'll just keep on the outside. Out traction him on the exit. Have DRS again. Second bite of the cherry. And lap 24 will maintain that into the uh, next corner on the end of the back straight there. And we're going to be up into P2. But the job's not done there because, of course, we're on super softs. They're on soft tyres. So as we go on through this Grand Prix, my tyres will be a lot worse than theirs in terms of the tyre wear and the actual grip levels we have. And so Gassi comes back at us there, but he locks up very badly on the front right tyre there. So equally, maybe he's throwing in some tyre wear. So both of us having to contend with that and a bit of a lock up, both of us into that corner at the end of sector one. We're going to come back in there, get back in the slipstream, pull back out to the inside there, but he has a very good brake zone. We lock up badly on the front right. So both of us are really shredding our front tyres here at this stage of the race with only about six laps to go once this one ends. And uh, the, the, you've got the both uh, Renaults actually closing up of both Carlos Sainz and Fernando Alonso there. So we need to be careful, not just for my sake, but also for Gasly. He's going to have to be careful. And so uh, I'm hoping he doesn't fight us too much, but he's going to come back at us 
on lap 31 and try and sail one back around the outside again but we go very deep into that corner and try and defend as aggressively as we can to maintain P2 all the while Lewis Hamilton here he's in no man's land in P1 he's enjoying himself he's, he's probably just enjoying for the first time in a long while being up in first place it's uh, really a big return to the top for the Mercedes uh, Brit uh, there of Hamilton but we've got more things to worry about because Gasly has a very good right hander there and swoops round to the inside and just gets us completely on the traction and we've just been bamboozled and pushed down to P3 in a matter of a few seconds there. We're going to have to try and come back in though. We stick right up his chuff there in the gearbox and we're going to have to try and make the move maybe to turn one potentially as we're literally going to push him through the last few corners I think pretty much as he's a little bit slow with those soft tires not doing too well. I mean that's a reason why I kind of avoid that tire at this Grand Prix. It's not a really great race tire but here we go now. DRS open, overtake mode as well. Hot lap mode engaged down the inside of turn one. Lock up there. Have to give him the room because he's alongside us so we have to give him the room. We can't completely squeeze him out there and so we do get back up into P2 just about though but now there comes Carlos Sainz knocking. He might be three wide between the Sauber, Red Bull and Renault as we lock up badly. There go deeper. It actually helps us out there to squeeze out Gasly and there goes Carlos Sainz now up into P3. Opportunistic move there from the Spaniard and there goes the other Spaniard of Fernando Alonso there on the left hand side round the outside he goes of Gasly he could make that a Renault 3-4 there and Gasly could lose three positions in a matter of a few corners there as Alonso still has it to the inside those two have a nice little battle there but Alonso does get that it's a brilliant move there for Fernando Alonso and he's up into P4 now here he goes overtaking his teammate there so Alonso bit between his teeth coming through there no nonsense stuff on the outside there he's going to try and out track his teammate there. I think he has DRS, I want to say. I can't quite tell actually. I don't, think, I don't think either of them have DRS open right there. But Alonso gets it on the outside. Knowing him, he's going to take no for an answer there. Keep it committed and he is going to eventually get up into P3 of this Grand Prix. Absolute fighting, fighting last stint there for Fernando Alonso. And on lap 34, he's going to come and try and chase after us and he's going to sail past us there in the break zone. I literally could not try and even attempt to dive bombing back because that would have just ended in some bad contact and damage. I do have DRS though, so let's try and see if we can try and get him back into the next right-hander and maybe try and make a move in sector two. We are gaining quite a fair bit. We're going to go for a little bit of a pop as he goes a little bit wide. We get oh so close on the apex there, but just can't quite get it. And you can see clearly he's got the better pace now as we go on to the last few laps of this Grand Prix. And my tyres now are pretty much streaming there and I'm just trying to survive. I mean, look at that. The amount of oversteer we got there. I nearly, I nearly almost bin the car on the left-hand side there onto the grass and wasn't careful. And so we just about maintained the position ahead of Carlos Sainz and Gasly. So as we move on now to towards the last lap of the Grand Prix. Yellow flags up ahead. Is it an uh, engine failure for Kimi Raikkonen? I think that is the Ferrari spew smoke. Big, big engine failure for him. So it goes from bad to worse for Ferrari, guys. And Raikkonen's out of the Grand Prix. On the last lap of the Grand Prix, though, I think uh, we've lost the chance to get P2. But I think we should be able to hopefully keep this P3 in this Grand Prix. We go to the last two corners then. Lewis Hamilton returns to the top step of the podium here in an F1 Grand Prix, an F1 2018 career mode. GG's Alonso P2. And for us, it's a very good P3. Great drive, great drive. We're really happy with that performance. And Mercedes have pulled off a great victory here today. So, Ant, how exactly did they set themselves apart from the pack today? I feel like consistency was probably the key today. There's being quick, and then there's being quick lap after lap after lap. If you can do that, you can capitalise on other people's errors without making many of your own. And that's an approach that can push you a long way up the field. So in the end, some very solid recoveries from not only myself, but also Fernando Alonso, because remember he got knocked out in Q2 in P11 there. Leclerc with a two-stop, unfortunately, only P7. If he tried the one-stop, I think he could have been right up there with me, to be honest, with a track position there. But I will very much take P3. A little bit annoying not to get P2, but the tire wear just wasn't, it just wasn't there for us. And Alonso had way too much pace, and I was just a bit too cautious, maybe, on the brake zone. But it does mean we take the lead of the Drivers' Championship, actually, now, because obviously Gasly was the one leading the way by only one point, and he obviously finished behind both myself 
Valve and Alonso and Sainz. And so we take the lead. Alonso up into P2. Gasly down, down to P3. But it is so close. And it just keeps on switching constantly between us three now in the standings the last few episodes. And also the likes of Carlos Sainz, Leclerc, you know, Ocon and Hamilton, they're not too far behind as well. So it is still all to play for, really. You know, if there's some bad luck involved later on for any of us three, the, the other guys could come into it. Constructors-wise, we're just about still somehow maintaining the lead of this Constructors' Championship. I don't know really how, honestly, because it hasn't felt like uh, uh, as a team we've been that consistent. But I guess we uh, have because the numbers don't lie. So we're one point ahead of Renault and Red Bull still maintain P3. Mercedes now up into P4. And it looks like they're going to try maybe mount a charge now to try and chase after Red Bull uh, and basically the entire uh, pack of the top three. Because, of course, they do ha now have the pace now finally on paper and also in the actual you know race itself because that's been the, the testament Hamilton's won a Grand Prix now after so long of Mercedes not being there um so it's uh, kind of nice to see them in a way kind of back there in the forefront because they've been there so low for so long but for us that's been a very very solid episode a bit of a disaster at the start there that was a little bit annoying but we made it work recovered to P3 I think that's pretty good obviously not as good as uh, the French Grand Prix was but still a solid Grand Prix for us at the Austrian Grand Prix so guys if you did enjoy that episode be sure to smash that like button. Let me know your thought in the comments below. New around here, subscribe for weekly Fallen content. And guys, I gotta say, you know, just to, you know, we're 135 episodes in, and you guys keep smashing the support. I just gotta say, a bit random out of the blue, but I just gotta say a massive, massive thank you to you guys who tune in every single time one of these up episodes is uploaded. And you know, the support has been still, still crazy. Great to see the comments, great to see the likes, and just the support coming. So thank you very much for that. And I'm really, it's, I'm really still enjoying this game. And season seven so far has been a bit of a roller coaster uh, season so far, and it's gonna be a tough one. Like I've said many times before with the way our car just can't get any better and every other car around us seemingly just has so much potential to get better and better so it's going to be a tough old season but stick with me I'm going to try our best to fight back in this championship and try and maintain this kind of hold we have of it in the drivers and constructors but till then guys till my next episode hope you enjoy the rest of your day goodbye